Hello everyone, in this video we're going to learn about doubly linked list uh, data structure and uh, I'm going to uh, explain uh, the way that uh, it is implemented uh, uh, in uh, a language such as Java. So the code that I'm going to write will be uh, very uh, similar to the Java code, not exactly, but it's very close to the, uh, the way that the Java language uh, is uh, working. So as we know, the uh, linked list uh, is a kind of data structure that stores like the information or data. And it is uh, through uh, some nodes that are connected to each other through a chain or through uh, like the references to the address of the next one in the chain. So in my previous videos, we talk about uh, the, the single linked list in which that each node is connected to only its next node. But in double link list, uh, each node is connected to its uh, next node, also it knows about its previous node. So I'm going to draw an example of the double link list here. Uh, here is uh, maybe the first node, we, which we call head. So the very first one is called head. And then we know what is the next node through next. And then here we have the previous. So if the node uh, head, and then here let's call this node node A. So the previous node of node, uh, the previous node of A is the header, and the next node of the node head is A. So you uh, easily can just draw, uh, you know, more nodes, and here we go. So uh, if you want to uh, implement the uh, double link list uh, like the in a more efficient way, uh, we can actually create. Uh, uh, or label the very last node to be uh, tail. So, and uh, in my single, uh, uh, like the linked list widow, I explained that uh, if uh, the time complexity to do the uh, pop back and the push back uh, function will be from the big of n, because we don't know which node is the uh, last node, and we need to traverse from the very first node to the very last node. And because uh, there are n nodes in the linked list, the time complex, uh, complex of the pushback function and the popback function will be called end. And the pushback function again means uh, adding a node at the very end of the linked list and popback means uh, removing or deleting the very last node. So by labeling the, also the very last node to be tail, uh, then it's going to be much easier to uh, implement uh, uh, some of the operation in linked list. So assuming that these, uh, we know the header and tail, I'm going to uh, just uh, write a very simple uh, definition of the uh, double link list in, you know, very similar uh, code to Java. So if uh, we have a class, first I'm going to start with the node, and we're assuming it's a generic class, which means that the data of the nodes will be from the type T, that which will be assigned later. So each node, as you see, has some data, which is from the type T. It can be a numeric value, it can be uh, some objects, so it can be anything. And then here we have access or uh, a connection to the next node and a connection to the previous node. So, and for sure, it is another node. So next, and then we have previous. So class node. Uh, which is generic and we have data of the node and then we have the next and the previous one. Uh, for sure again you can just create the constructors or set of setters and getters but we want to like a see with very uh, simple definition of uh, the class and a node uh, in the double link list. Here uh, we also uh, gonna create the class uh, link list Again, is a generic class with a type T, which means the data from the type T. So as uh, we learned uh, in the uh, single link list, again, uh, you can watch my previous videos by the single link, uh, link list, uh, we need to access, uh, or we have, uh, we need to have access to the, the very first node, and also we added the very last node. So I'm gonna keep uh, header, also I'm gonna keep tail. So these are uh, like the nodes that I'm keeping for in the linked list. 
for sure uh, you know if you want for example to know uh, how many nodes exist in the linked list you can uh, add another instance variable another variable to the linked list class such as the size to keep that the number of items we have in the linked list but uh, again we're going to just stick with the one that are uh, directly related to the definition and to the basic uh, concept or the main concept of the of a linked list. So with this explanation of the uh, and with this uh, visual exa example of the double linked list, let's see that uh, how we can actually uh, implement some uh, methods that we have learned before, such as the push back, push front, pop back, and pop front also insertion and. Uh, deletion methods of uh, from a linked list. So I'm going to start with uh, the method uh, push front, which going to insert a node at the very uh, beginning of a linked list, a double linked list. So again, we have the data from the type T, and we're going to see how it works. So in a double linked list, uh, there are two scenarios that can happen. Uh, one of them is when we're dealing with an empty linked list. And so that means that uh, the node that we're going to insert will be both head and tail at the same time. So that's something that one scenario that's going to happen. The other scenario can happen is when you have a linked list uh, which is not empty, which means at least we have one node in the linked list. So we need to consider both of these cases when you're implementing the push front function. So I'm going to start with the case and saying that if head is equal to null, which means that there is no uh, like the uh, node in the linked list, or in other words, the linked list is empty. But before that, I'm going to make sure that I have created a node, let's call it n. And uh, it's going to be a node create, uh, which is created out of these data that I receive as the parameter. Again, this I'm using a, a constructor. You can just create your own constructors, or you know. But again, we're assuming that we are creating a node out of the data that we receive as the parameter. Now, if the header is equal to null, which means that the link is empty, so we're going to set both head and tail both of them to be this node n. So that's what's gonna happen. Uh, so if I'm gonna visually draw that example, that's gonna be a linked list, and this is the node n with the data as you see here. And then uh, we label this one to be the header node and to be the tail node at the same time. So the first node, the very last node, and also the node n. So three labels or another word nicknames maybe uh, for this node that we just created. So uh, that's for, for the case that the linked list is empty. But what if the linked list is not empty, which means that uh, at least there is uh, one node in the linked list. And I'm going to uh, draw an example here. So let's assume that we have at least this node, uh, which is uh, there here so it doesn't matter that uh, if uh, there are more than one uh, like the node in our uh, uh, link list or not because what we're going to do we are going to only need access to uh, the very first node which is head that's what we care about so if this is a case and here is going to be the node n which is going to be created so this is in the node n which has uh, or exists here with the data that we have and as you see here because it is a double linked list we need to create uh, two uh, connections so one connection is from the data this node n to the head which is I'm going to call the connection number one which is the next node of node n and then there is a connection from the header node to this new node which I'm going to call it connection number two so which is the previous node of the head so as you see, sometimes visualizing the like the things or the concept or the problem can help you to understand the problem better. That's always a recommendation to my students in classes to draw with some examples and to better uh, grasp the uh, idea behind uh, these uh, like the concept. Okay, 
With this explanation, let's see what I need to do. I have the node N, and as you see, I uh, need to make the first connection, which is N.next must be head. So simply write N.next be equal to head. Again, uh, I'm uh, you know ignoring a lot of details here. For example, you know this en encapsulation uh, concept uh, that you know maybe we need to use a setter rather than uh, creating. Uh, you know, write to end that next, but again, that's like details that you know we don't need to be worried about it here. So we have the first uh, connection created, and now we need to create the second uh, connection, which is head dot uh, previous. So head dot previous to be called the node n. So we created these two connections, and now. As you see here, because this node n has been inserted before the header, the current header cannot be the header anymore. Okay, so that is our old header. Now this node n must be the new head. So what I need to do, I need to just simply write here. So that's uh, step three. So step three is just to write head must be equal to n. So uh, we need to be careful. We cannot uh, write a step three before step one and two. Step three must be written exactly after step one and two. Otherwise, uh, we are actually setting the next and previous node of the n to itself, which is wrong. So we need to make sure that we are making the connection with the old head first. That's what we've done in these two steps. And then at the third step, we are uh, changing the label. Which node not going to be the header? The node n will be the header. Uh, so going uh, to the time complex of this uh, push run uh, operation or method, as you see, no matter if uh, the link looks empty or not, the number of main operations or the operation in general is not related to the number of items that I have in the or the number of nodes that we have in the link list. So it always works with the, uh, the header node, which is only one node. So it means that the number of items is a constant. So that means the push front time complexity of uh, the uh, for the double link list is from the peak of one. So that's for the push front. Now let's go to the another uh, method, which is a uh, push back. So we're going to see that how the pushback function will work. So again, as I said, we're going to assume that we have access to the tail node. That's important uh, because otherwise, if we don't have the tail, uh, that's going to reduce the problem to uh, you know what I have uh, said in my single link list uh, uh, pushback uh, pushback method. You can just watch that video that I said the time comes around the big up and, and the reason is we don't have access to the last node, so we need to traverse end nodes to find which node is uh, the uh, last one. But if we have the, we have access to the last node, uh, again, I'm gonna draw an example here, hopefully it's gonna work. Uh, let me, right, push back. And again, we have the date, uh, data from the type T. So again, there are two cases. Uh, one case is that our uh, link list is empty, which is very similar to what we wrote here. So if uh, the link is empty, then uh, we need to just repeat what we had. So in the pushback, first let's create the node n, which is going to be created out of the data that we receive as the parameter for this function push uh, back. So here we go, and then uh, we have this first if statement if uh, header is equal to null, which means that their uh, link list is empty. Then uh, both uh, bo uh, both head and tail will be set uh, will be assigned to or uh, n will be assigned to header and tail. So and then in the else statement, uh, what we need to do is when we have more than one node. And I'm going to draw an example here for the else statement or the else part. So again, what we care here is only tail. We don't care about the head here because uh, it's a pushback. So what we need only uh, needs to work with the tail. So because we have access to the node uh, tail, and again, that's going to be 
at the new uh, node n will be the last node or pushback. So here is our node n with this data here, and I'm going to again draw the connections that we need to make. We need to cre uh, create a connection from uh, tail to n, so that's going to be the next node of tail. We need to create a connection from n to tail, which is the previous node of node uh, uh, n. And also, because we're adding n to the very end of the link list, the old tail cannot be the tail anymore. We need to put the n to be our uh, last node. So let's just start with the connection number one, which is tail.next to be called to n, which is again our node. Then our, uh, I'm going to write 10.previous is equal to tail. So that's the connection number one, that's connection number two. And now the third step is to uh, get rid of the old tail because that's not going to keep the uh, that nickname anymore and instead uh, these node n will be our new tail. So I'm going to write it here uh, with that tail to be equal to n. So that's our the alpha statement and we have all these uh, steps. So that's the step number three also on the uh, on like this drawing that I have here. So let's look at the pushback uh, from the time complex perspective. As you see, no matter if the link list is empty or not, uh, the number of operation uh, is constant. It does not uh, uh, depend. It doesn't depend on the number of items that we have in the link list, which means that uh, we're not over the, on the input size. So it means that the time complex of the pushback using the tail node for, uh, will be from the big O one. Again, if you're not using the node tail, we need to traverse from the head and find the very last node, which exactly depends on the number of items in the link list, will, uh, which will change the time complex to the big O n. So as you see, just adding, the, adding one node to the link list, which is tail, will uh, reduce the time complexity of the pushback operation to big O one, which is a very uh, good time complexity. In our, uh, my other videos, I'm going to talk about um, uh, like some other uh, operations on linked list, which will be the pop back and pop front, also the insertion and deletion in a double, uh, double linked list uh, with uh, both head and tail.